Okay, welcome everyone to uh, Lovelace Tent at noon. Um, coming up, we have uh, Kanai Gossman, who is a systems designer from Detroit. Um, he's giving a talk on introduction to quantum perturbation. Um, and let's give a big round of, her, uh, of applause. Thank you. Hello. Sorry. Ah. So <clears throat> quantum perturbation is a, uh, sounds like a really complex uh, as uh, aspect of quantum mechanics, but it's actually, in simple terms, it's uh, the shaking of a wave. Um, in quantum mechanics, there's a lot of uh, emphasis set to uh, waves and what are waves, and that's what my talk is about, and how can we use it, what can we do about it, and just random facts from the internet. Uh, my disclaimer for, um, for this talk is that I'm not a mathematician or just pretty much nobody that got interested in this topic and started researching. But um, <clears throat> notice how uh, there's a tilde next to the facts, so you should really verify your own information. Indicates sort of facts, you know, wiki facts. Uh, I'd like to speak for half the time, or roughly a little more than half the time, and hold your questions till the end. Mostly, uh, probably because I don't know the answers to your questions. I can tell you right away. Uh, it's just going to be like that. But if there's something I need to clarify, I probably won't anyways. Uh, so we'll just wait till the end. So... Um, <laughs> And then that's my disclaimer. So, wait, what, why are we dealing with waves? Waves are actually a common component of everyday life. Uh, a lot of things in the uh, macro world are waves also. Uh, it's interesting for us to look at waves because they can be foretelling of what's gonna happen next. Especially in harmonic systems, a wave is uh, considered predictable because you know where it's going to end up. It's following a pre uh, predictable trajectory and it goes up and down. Um, a full definition of a wave is actually very hard uh, to encompass. Um, uh, and so I will begin with another set of disclaimers. Basically, the quantum mechanics is still not understood completely and uh, you should pretty much ignore anything that anybody says after according to quantum mechanics. And so let's talk, take a look at waves. Um, waves, uh, like I said, on the macro world, on our human size world, human scale, we see pendulums um, as a, an example of a wave, but on the micro world, uh, nano in, inside of atom, atoms around atoms on the nuclear scale and the subatomic scale, there are waves that we can use to make predictions whether reactions happen or not. Uh, so for our purposes, we're just going to look at waves and not necessarily one-dimensional. A single all-encompassing definition for a term wave is not really straightforward. You, you can have um, disturbance um, traveling through a medium by which energy is transferred from one particle of the medium to another without causing any permanent displacement of the medium itself be considered a wave also. But also, a particle has coordinates, and those coordinates can be tracked as a wave as it bounces from place to place, as I, I'll talk later about. For example, uh, optical activity um, is also hap happens in waves. Photons travel in, in a certain uh, trajectory and they bounce around as a wave and uh, we can see that in optical activity because if we change polarization of a medium that it passes through it can't pass anymore because it's being cut off. Um, oceans wa have waves, tides, and um, word origin? Um, who knows? You know, Where did the word wave come from? Maybe it's just some guy waving his hand. And, um, so, as I said, particle systems can be explained in waves also. 
for example, when you um, when you shake, uh, where's my mouse? When you shake a connected graph, you're actually perturbing the coordinates of all the other nodes associated with that item. So as you're as you're perturbing one node that's connected to all the other nodes, you're you're altering its uh, position, and that's a perturbation of its position. If you consider its coordinates as a wave. Um, one interesting aspect of the perturbation theory is that it was based on Hamiltonian theory, which was um, a system of dynamical governed equations in physics that help you deduce uh, motion of planets and uh, pendulums, any kind of harmonic systems that when you apply uh, other modifiers to it, you can still predict what the outcome is with, um, with uh, more and more accurate precision the more you calculate it. Oh, sorry. This is another perturbation. This is closer to, um, it's essentially the same thing. You're shifting, you're shifting positions of uh, particles. And so this is kind of leading on to what it, um, what, a, what a dynamic billboard's table is, which is, um, Sorry, I have my notes. I do. All right. If I could just wing it. Um, the interesting aspect of a dynamic billiards table is uh, it's a system where particles alternate from straight motion um, and a specular reflection. It's like a bill billiards table, except that the boundaries are not restricted to simple rectangles. So the math involved in the reflect specular reflection off the edges gets a little more complex. But in this sense, um, that is a wave that's being perturbed by the borders. Just another way of thinking about what the waves are. Harmonic systems have a predictable, as I said earlier, they have a predictable path of information um, the trajectory, uh, they oscillate in a certain predictable way. And as you perturb this system, you get a slightly different graph, but if the disturbance is minute, you can still make predictions and calculations of where the, the path will go to. That was, should have been the first slide. <laughs> Diagramic representation of Rayleigh Schrodinger perturbation theorem. Um, so there's a concept of eigenvalues, and eigenvalues are um, there's a very complex definition of how you can uh, use eigenvalues in uh, transformation using a matrix. But to me, I um, I'm not a mathematician, so I just like to think of it as integers. It's a it's a form of floor values that have a specific kind of quantized value. They can't be um, they can't be in the middle. That's how I perceive it to be. In. Uh, if you um, if you um, have an eigenvector, that that vector can be um, modified. That's what it's set up for uh, across the whole list of items. So uh, in many instances, it can be thought of as a list of real numbers called elements. An eigenvector. Um, eigenvectors of a square matrix. Uh, is a non-zero vector that, when multiplied by um, a lambda, that's supposed to be, yields the original vector multiplied by a single number. So here we can see that basically it, you're amplifying uh, a set where it was y, x, y was at one point, lambda, y, lambda, x is at a different point. And uh, <clears throat> it's really this. This is an example of perturbing uh, an eigenvalues for for a graph for the for an image. You're altering. You're just transforming it. It's also a perturbation of it. Um, and
And I guess Mona Lisa wants to stay up there for a while. It's just going to be like that. All right, so here comes the Hamiltonian um, equation. Uh, Hamiltonian... William Rowan Hamilton uh, was born in 1806 and lived till 1805 and lived till 1865. He, he was a very smart dude, did a lot of stuff when he was young, and uh, it's good. Uh, but one of the things that he worked on was um, how to predict uh, particle and energy. So H... Um, H was a way to calculate... Uh, what the value of the energy is. Google. <laughs> uh, but for many particles, um, whereas one particle was a simple equation, for many particles you're dealing with sigma notation. So it's you kind of you can see already that you're going to have to apply uh, a transformation uh, to a list, not just a certain number, because you're dealing with multiple particles. Uh, and so I'm not going to dive into any mathematical equations because I don't want to. So this is an example of um, a perturbation uh, graph um, on multiple dimensions. Let me see if I can get this to work. This actually shows you um, perturbation of subatomic particles and the, their likeliness of existence in, in, a, in a certain location. So what are we dealing with here uh, when we're talking about these things? We're really, we're looking for the probability density of a cloud of electrons. Where is the electron going to be? And that, that can be described as a wave. And uh, it is good. This is a cross-section of that distribution. Uh, for a simple hydrogen uh, atom, it's, it's quite simple. You have a cloud, and it, it looks like a cloud. It is a cloud. Uh, and it has a distribution, normal distribution. Um, so we, ha we do have a periodic table, obviously. We all know about that. It's good stuff, you know. Um, <clears throat> but there's also nuclear physics, and that deals with uh, a different aspect of uh, <clears throat> of our periodic table uh, <laughs> on a different scale. But it's um, it, this is a cat. People like cats. I thought I'd just throw it in there. It's important. Um, electrons. Uh, can be excited to different states. And this is where uh, eigenvalues help us because these states are um, are quantized. So they're, they're this or that. And when it jumps up, it takes in a photon, it jumps down, it releases a photon. That's where we have light. Um, hydrogen atom has this many states. If you excite it, it'll jump to 2s. And uh, excite it even more, it'll go across the this uh, structure. Um, getting bigger and bigger, and then collapsing to release light, a photon. Um, so the crystal, crystalline structures um, also exist in waves in the sense that uh, they vibrate at a certain frequency. Sorry, the information is a little um, chaotic right now. It's my first time doing this talk and some of the things that are embedded in here are not coming through. Um, static susceptibility of interacting systems. Molecules in the structure. Awesome. <clears throat> so, um, Rayleigh-Schrodinger uh, perturbation theorem deals with how the subatomic particles get released and turned off. And the probability of them being released, that's not exactly an accurate statement, but just keep going with it. You can give me corrections quite soon. Um, so we have several subatomic particles and notations for them within the Feynman, Feynman diagram. Um, 
Um, not making any sense right now. This is a state of Angela Merkel when she's really tired and has to listen to a lot of technical information that's not really presented well in this case. Um, these are some of my sources, um, a, lot, a lot of uh, Wikipedia also, but these are some good places to look for more information. Thank you for taking a part in this show. And I will take your questions and comments now. Anyone? Bueller? Um, so I just got really interested in this topic and I just started searching through the internets for it. Um, there's a fascinating way that they use Feynman diagrams um, to talk about how subatomic particles um, uh, eject from a collision. It's probably a better way of describing it. So a Feynman diagram has space on the on the y on the x-axis and the uh, space and time. And as you as two subatomic particles approach each other, they come in on one side and leave on the other side. And during this time, they're uh, they're passing through this wave where it's in a flux, sort of. Um, cool. Uh, and. That's just the notation I wanted to show you again. So fermions and bosons are are a good example of subatomic particles because they are. The, there's a major difference between bosons and fermions. Bro, bosons are uh, social, whereas fermions are antisocial. So if you take an equation to predict where their position is, it's gonna where bosons would have two functions next to each other with a plus sign, where you can flip the x1 and x2 without a problem. In a fermion, you have to take those uh, equations that predict its location, which is also a wave, um, and uh, subtract the two. So that if you flip x1 and x2, you have to change everything else around it, and it becomes antisocial, meaning it can't be in the same location as the other. They will repel each other, like uh, similarly pulled magnets. Exactly, yeah. In the same location and quantum state quantum state. Yes. Yes. So they cannot be in the same quantum state at the same time, and whereas bosons don't have that problem. Uh, and the way that it, that's expressed is by a negative, uh, taking two functions as uh, one being positive and one subtracted from it. So that if you replace it, uh, you get the opposite. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Could you please explain to me the uh, what do you use uh, Schrodinger perturbation for? Is it what 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 problem does it solve, or what kind of? Um, so when you have a wave and you perturb it with some kind of energy, you excite it in a different way, making the wave oscillate at a different periodicity. Um, the Rayleigh-Schrodinger perturbation theorem (RSPT) meant to create a way to um, estimate the result of the perturbation on the original system. So you have a wave equation, a simple sine curve, for example, and you perturb it with adding x to it. RSPT wanted to uh, be able to calculate, approximate values closer and closer to what it is. Um, they used Hamiltonian as a base to, and they expanded from it. Uh, so where do the eigenvalues come in and the eigenvectors? The eigenvalues are the base for the calculation for it because you can't really take an analog value of a wave because there's so many different um, values in between the start and finish of what you're analyzing. Eigenvalues make a shorter list, kind of uh, a Riemann sum of, of the wave. Yes, yes. Schrodinger equation in general is difficult to solve. Difficult to solve. You have. 
so you just you uh, devise this the state you can solve and you say okay anything I don't understand I do some kind of it's a generalized tailored expansion around the solution I understand and that is what perturbation theory is yes 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 so um, yeah so you go so there from, this, from, a, from a state that you you know for example decomposed in har harmonics yes and then you want to describe something you don't know and you make approximations to it because you cannot solve the whole differential equation. It's too complicated. That's the, that's the and the more you perturb, the, complex. Uh, the more complex it becomes, the more difficult it is. The more... What do you mean by complex it becomes? Um, more perturbation for it. Uh, if you're not calculating just the decomposition state, but decomposition state next to a star, and you have other va values, variables, could have affecting your system, then it becomes even more difficult to, to calculate. And so this, this helped. It's, an, it's a tool to help you calculate, estimate the value. Yeah, well, it's not only a tool, it's the only method because we have not the capability to solve the complete equation. Even, for example, in a classical system with three planets, it's hard to do. Yeah. Yeah, so what, I mean, you, what, what do, do you do? do? Yeah. yeah. So uh, only some very simple systems can be solved completely. And in terms of these, and that is what, but what the eigenvalues and eigenvectors can be, you can, you can decompose the problem into the, uh, the, 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 the base you understand. And these base are, for example... So, uh, yes, that's true. And the simple systems you're talking about is just a simple hydrogen atom where it has one particle that you're trying to calculate, right? Well, for the, for the, for the, the pure atoms, it's kind of doable, yeah? Yeah. So yeah. because you have only this charge in the center and, 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 if, and if for one atom, it's if for one electron, it's solvable. You get the sphere and all these others. And you get all these beautiful pictures of, uh, of, your, uh, of your density state. And what he talks about in a wave function is actually why is it so difficult to uh, envision a wave function? It's a complex wave. But how do you envision a complex wave? The problem is that we don't have a, an, a, a good image of what this is. So if we treat it as a particle, it reacts as a particle. If you treat it as a wave, it reacts as a wave. But what it is, you cannot, you cannot make a clear uh, image about that in your mind. It's like a cylinder in, in three dimensions. If you look at two dimensions, if you look at from one side, it's a circle. If you look at from the other side, it's a rectangle. But it's a cylinder, but we cannot you know, see that. So that makes it difficult. Awesome. Well, Anybody want to talk about anything else? Like, what's for lunch? You know? What's good, you know, well, anything uh, quantum related? Um, if there's no more questions for now, um, anyone who wants to talk to speaker, just go up to him personally and, you know, we can go off to the next thing. <laughs> All right? Yep. Give him a, uh, right Thank you, guys. Too kind, too kind. <laughs>